Hi everyone, welcome back to Python Code Nemesis. Today we will be understanding how to create a backend Flask app and host it for free on Python anyway. So a bit of context, sometimes we just want to do a few projects, especially um, students. And we don't really have much requirements for the backend. It's just a few APIs that the front end can call. Also handling the DB um, functions and getting data from the backend and stuff like that. So if you want to host a Flask backend very fast, quickly, you're in a hackathon, how would you do it? So I explored a bunch of options out there and Heroku was one of the um, mostly used options that we used to use. Now I can see that it's asking for some credit card information as well. So in case you wanted to go for something which is a lot simpler, you do not need to, you know, set up pricing and stuff like that, is where you use pythonanywhere.com. So let's get started. Python Anywhere is a powerful platform for hosting and managing web applications. In this presentation, we'll explore how to create a backend Flask app and host it for free on Python Anywhere. We'll also look at some other features of Python Anywhere as well and the common mistakes that people usually do, which, you know, makes their sites faint. So let's get started. <laughs> The first thing is to create a Flask app. So I'll just show you a very simple Flask app that I have created. It's in app.py. Yeah. So on my screen, you'll see we have this uh, simple Python app. Yeah. So from Flask, you import Flask, JSONify request, and from Flask cores, import cores, Y cores. So if I will be showing you this very simple API, we will see that it will definitely be called from a different domain. So when you look at it from your browser, it is not through an error because this server knows that the request has been sent by a browser and not a different domain. But when having a try to use any other domain to call this back in API, it will throw a cross resource origin error, which is course. And to deal with that, to make sure that you allow requests from all domains, you need to set course for this app. So in this course part, you can also add a list of origins that is the very few selected sites where you will be allowing data from. In this case, because this is a very simple Python app, we do not need that. In case you were doing something in production or even remotely close, definitely add your domains that you want to be giving access to for this backend API. So I have a very simple card content data. So it has apple, which uh, five apples, three bananas, and two oranges. There's this calculate total price function, which sums up um, prices of item into quantity for item and quantity in card contents for items. And then you round it off by two decimal places. So the price of an apple is 0.5, banana 0.3, and orange 0.25. So it just multiplies it by this, like 5 into 0 0.5, 3 into 0 0.3, and 2 into 0 0.25, and gives you the price. So depending on the number of um, contents, you'll get the price calculated. This is the first endpoint, which is slash view card, which allows get. So when you call this endpoint, this function gets executed. So total price is calculate total price. Return JSONify of card contents, which is on this card contents and total price, which is also a variable in there, which initially is 
this one. So the total price is equal to calculate total price and calculate this total price and then returns it and that's it's returned. So that's what's the view card, what is the existing card and what is the total price endpoint. And now we have the add to cart endpoint. So you get some data from the request, get the item, get the quantity that was added, then add the quantity of the item to this. So let's say we added five apples. You get the existing uh, content, like number of apples as five, and then you add five to it. So now the number of apples is 10. You also calculate the total price again, because after adding some uh, fruits to the cart, now the total price is increased, definitely. And you return this as well. So that now the card details are updated in the front end as well. So just run this uh, main app and debugging quality refer every time I refresh and save it, it restarts the application. So now let me know what it looks like. We'll be doing this again. So if we quickly go to this side. Sure. Let me see. Wait. What happened here? Okay. So what happened here, guys? What do you think happened here? Why can't we see this? This is something that, you know, I did a lot because, again, I was like, oh, this is not running, but. Yep, here it goes. So it is running. In case you want to, you know, have like something like, you know, a route where you know that, oh, it's working then have something like this so if we do at app dot root and then just slash endpoint method equals get and do a def index function which will return Three twenty five. The generic structure that we used. Or we could just return a simple string. But where is um and we're running? So let's see what we get when we save this. So we go back here. Let's check if this is running again. Yep, it's running. Right. So seems like there's some issue with the receiver. So we can also do that, but let's see. Yes. Sure. 
Hey, this should be working. Okay, we received the thoughts, the issue. We give it come. We'll it. Well, something happened here. No audio limp ripped. You do not know why we imported this. Definitely doesn't make sense. And again, we have to retry this admin. But anyway. So this should be running, and if we go here, it should give us a text. <clears throat> so this is something that you can do in case you want to check your server is up and running. Uh, the issues that I faced was I needed to, like, for some reason, because I'm using a different um, path here, apart from my specific user path, I need to give it admin access to save the file every time. So that's why the file didn't get saved automatically. Right, so that's about just checking it locally. Now we'll be using pythonanywhere.com. So if we just go to Python Anywhere, Python Anywhere. Right, so you should give me my console dashboard. Yeah, so now you can see. This is um, my dashboard, and it does come with a tutorial that it tells you exactly what to do to host some few files, but initially, if you want to create a Flask app, you go to My Site, you go to your files here in this tab, then you go to My Site, and then you can see your files, but we need, like when you start this app, when you log in, it will ask you for a Python version. So make sure that the Python version that you select there is the same version as for your site. So if you go and open a bash console here, you can open it in a new tab. Right, so let's see what consoles we have on existing ones here. Yeah. So. Yeah, what you need to do is, in case you have any dependencies, you just do a pip install. I had Flask cores, so just pip install Flask cores, and then um, it will find you your installation. This moves fast. Yep. Pip install Flask cores. Yep. So this, this is how it goes. This pip install plus course. Then install course. So if you go to my site, there's a bunch of things that I was trying to add. We do not need any of this. We just need flaskcap.py. And here is where I've copy pasted the, uh, you know, index. Like all the code that I had in my um, VS code in there. So you just copy paste in your code and then save it and then just refresh the server. So this will host your web app out there. And if you have like correctly done everything, like if you take a look here, there's consoles, right? And then there's web. Go to error log. And then, and also very important for this web tab, Make sure that the Python version that you're using is the same as the one that you have on your console. Otherwise, <coughs> it might throw errors. So I was getting a bunch of errors initially when I was trying to host this. So if I just show you, um, but I, so. When I did not have Flask cores installed and the version of Python wasn't matching, in like I did have Flask installed in Python 3.10, and Python 3.10 is the one that I was using. So I had to install Flask cores in there. So these are the previous history logs. Now you can 
take a look at this all of these logs like what are the server logs so if we go to python nemesis or python anywhere.com it shows welcome to python code nemesis and this shows all the logs for these are the server logs and yeah so this is working it's very simple you didn't have to do anything you do a view card and it shows you all the stuff so this was a, was a very simple version of it like we have a bunch of things that we'll be doing one of them is uh test using test sigma to test um the site that we'll be creating with it so yeah just give you a quick overview of this Let's see if this was the correct one. Nope, not correct. Yeah, it's a nice just um, go here and just copy paste this. Think correct, but yeah. Yeah, so this is what we're gonna do with it. Have a front end in React, have an item like let's say banana. And add like six of them to the cart, and it should automatically update the cart based on what we did. So, this is what we'll be trying to do. We'll be testing it with um, Test Sigma as well. So, in the next video, we'll be looking at the front end part of this application. So, if you're a newbie learning on um, how to quickly host your uh, front end and back end, you're at the right place. So thanks for watching. We'll be continuing this in the next video.